Today on the show, we talk about how you can navigate your way through such cyber crimes, what are the remedies in place, and what are the steps you should be taking if you unfortunately become a victim of such a cyber crime. Joining me on the broadcast are Abhishek Mitra, he's director at the Indian Cyber Security Solutions, and advocate Dr. Prashant Mali, he's a cyber and data protection lawyer. Thank you to both of you for joining us. Abhishek, I'd like to start with you. Um, you know, we're talking about the kind of crimes that are carried out in the field of investment, the kind of financial crimes that are prevalent nowadays. For our viewers, just simplify what are these crimes, how are they carried out, and what is the most common kind of cyber crime that you see in investments? Uh, latest, uh, if you talk about the last uh, year data and uh, this year as well, we have seen much of the crime are from uh, the financial frauds, which are comprising of 75%, which are already we are discussing on. Now, how these are undergone is uh, these uh, cyber frauds are mainly onto the part of uh, mutual funds investments uh, uh, and the loans which are granted to businesses or personal loans. Uh, these small and uh, medium sized uh, financial organizations as they uh, procure them to be, uh, they tend to uh, draw them into this kind of frauds. Uh, there are many ways of doing it. We'll be discussing on uh, in the in this uh, episode itself. And there are also uh, frauds related to uh, like the Aadhaar cards, which are once we are seeing many of the uh, frauds which are related to Aadhaar card because of the biometric uh, links which are being there. We, we have not gone like common people have not uh, encrypted their biometric in the M Aadhaar system. So what is happening? is if, if there are any kind of document exchange while you are purchasing any kind of properties, these Aadhaar cards are going to the third party vendors or somewhere wherein these leakages are happening. Hmm. So these are mainly comprising okay. of two uh, Abhishek, things. also help us understand. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Abhishek. No, no, yeah, please continue. So, uh, Abhishek, this also includes not just Aadhaar card, but the kind of investments we tend to make, uh, whether, you know, it's the Ponzi schemes, it's our mutual funds, uh, even crypto for that matter is included yes. in this, right? Right, right. It is included in this. There are many uh, app-based cryptocurrency investments which are going on, which leads to this kind of fraud because they tend to not to repay the uh, basic amounts and they tend to ask for more investments, which lead to a greater scam, which is in, in general increasing nowadays. And there are many laws which is there in the federal government. Mm. US have already passed on. We are expecting more laws, stringent laws in India as well. Hmm. And the fact that, uh, like you mentioned very correctly, the legality of crypto is different in different countries and therefore it makes the process of tracing uh, back to the perpetrator all the more difficult. But Abhishek, when it comes to crypto, the major challenge is the fact that you don't have anything in your hand. You know, with hard cash, you have that. You have the notes, you have the coins, but in crypto, you don't have that option. Uh, and therefore, the traceability becomes a lot more challenging uh, even though it is challenging in the usual normal kind of cyber crime in crypto, it becomes even more difficult. Yes, uh, see if, if you can uh, relate to the more ransomware attacks uh, are which have been happening uh, last few years. Those transactions are being done through cryptocurrency. The reason behind that is definitely the no non traceable thing. Now, it, the USP of the cryptocurrency in that mm. sense, it it is a, a non uh, traceable. So it becomes more risky once you are trading in uh, crypto and then you are not aware of with the uh, legalities and also the concerned person who is dealing or who whom you are giving that uh, money to so which is converted into crypto so it is very difficult to uh, trace and definitely uh, the origin of the uh, the investments the countries which are there what are the laws uh, of the land are different and uh, as uh, malasar has already been explaining that in a detailed manner it, it, this is what it, it stands right now which is very much risky when it comes to uh, crypto 
other way around, if you are thinking of other financial frauds which are happening in India, there are 80 to 90 percent chances that RBI uh, guidelines are being there. If you follow those guidelines and you complain it uh, or, or on the proper format, formal way, uh, while you're calling or you're going to cybercrime.gov.in and registering your complaint, your chances are high that the, within 24 hours you're doing that golden hour, which is said to be 24 hours to be a golden hour where you uh, give yeah. that complaint and you expect a, uh, b like, uh, back of that amount which has been fraud would been happened so once you get the complaint and once you go there in in the bank and uh, uh, like close all those uh, uh, accounts and also uh, protect the transactions wise like if you are having upi if you are having credit cards if you are having debit cards you block those things the chances are that you are not getting into more frauds and the you get get back the amount which is being done yeah so measures are there a couple of steps that we need to follow but uh, as you said, the most important step remains the fact that we report the cyber crime in the golden hour, which is usually 24 hours. In some cases, it is the first 48 hours, but usually in most cases, it is the first 24 hours that you, you know, realize that you have been a victim of a cyber crime. We we'll leave it there. Thank you to both of you, Abhishek Mitra and uh, Dr. Prashant Mali, for joining us on the broadcast and helping us understand a little better how we should navigate our way through to this dangerous world of cyber crimes. Thank you very much.